Hello everyone, me again. Uh, I had uh, a, an interview with uh, Jason Evangelo uh, on his Linux for Everyone uh, channel, which I'll link below, and uh, that came out this week. And in it, uh, we talked about the ease of uh, creating snaps and building snaps and publishing them. And I made a bold assertion that it's possible to create a snap in about an hour and have it published for, for people. Uh, and I thought I'd um, stand by that and see if we can actually do it. Uh, this also relates to a, a question I asked on the community tab in my YouTube channel, which you may have seen, where I asked, you know, what kind of things do you want me to do? And one of the things, the one that got the most votes was walk through how I created an existing snap. Um, and there were also some medium size votes for the others but walking through how I created an existing size uh, existing snap is is a chunky task if I pick a, a decently complicated snap so what I wanted to do is kind of have a stepping stone towards that by first of all finding a random fun thing to snap and making a snap of it and showing you the process then later in another video i can go through an existing snap that already exists which is more complicated um but i think it's probably best we start with making a simple one and then build on that knowledge for the next video so i hope you don't mind i'm subverting the um the results of the poll and uh, i'm going to do things slightly differently so once again here is my awesome laptop the thinkpad x220 the venerable thinkpad x220 which is currently running Ubuntu 2004. Once again, you shouldn't be running 2004. It's not released yet. It's um, currently uh, got a month or so to go. Where are we? 13th of March. It releases uh, right about there in April. So we're a, a good month and a bit away. So there may be bugs, maybe dragons, but I'm running it and it seems all right. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Unless you're an enthusiast and you've got a spare machine and you want to test it. Anyway, the focus of this video is to make a, a snap. So, I sometimes find myself browsing Hacker News. And last night, I was browsing Show Hacker News. Uh, you may have opinions about Hacker News, but one of the things it's good for is discovering new stuff. Because a lot of people publish articles about the stuff they've created on show hacking news and so i often go to the show tab um or browse it via an rss feed or a bot or something anyway last night i stumbled across this post here uh a terminal game written in rust and that was like ringing alarm bells for me someone's written a game which is great in rust sounds interesting in the terminal it's like all things just like lit up in my head uh, so there's a an interesting article uh it, it's quite sweet actually where the author talks about um going through the process of creating a game in the terminal using rust uh, with their children uh which i think is is brilliant and uh I, I can just imagine the process of the children giving suggestions and ideas and uh, the dad here having to implement those ideas, turn those that vivid imagination that children have into actual code. I think that's it's um, it's a wonderful thing. And so here is the game. And it's a game with rabbits, uh, rabbit chased by foxes, wolves and rifle armed hunters. Uh, so obviously this is the rabbit, the, the one in the middle. I say obviously. Um, and I think that's a wolf, and I think that's no. They're, what are they? Wolves, foxes. I think one of that's a fox, and the black blobs are wolves, and the pink one is the um, hunter who will help you if you hang around near him. Anyway, it talks a little bit about. Oh, there we go. There's the legend that tells you. I thought this was super interesting, and uh, it's very cute. And yes, the graphics are very basic. Uh, but it's 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 quite cool. I quite like it. And you know, they talk about it from a development point of view. Uh, and um, they've also put the code uh, on GitHub. So I hopped over to GitHub to have a look at this. And uh, sure enough, the code is all there. 
there have been no releases, just like most amateur projects on... I mean, amateur as in this person is an amateur, you know, but it's not a professional application. I think they won't mind me saying that. Um, and they've committed some code, and the code is there, and you could use it. Now, a normal person probably would never discover this. A normal person doesn't go and find software via Hacking News, doesn't then read developer blogs, and then install software by downloading it from from github and compiling it themselves right so i often say the way people install software on linux is they open an app store and then click on a button and they go oh i want that and then they click on an install button so let's make it easy for them by turning this application into a snap and i want to talk about the process i go through um, to turn this application into a snap and the reason i've chosen this one is you know it ticks all the little boxes in my head of things i like um, but also, uh, it's simple. And because it's simple, that means it will probably be simple to snap. So let's get started. Now, I've already done some preparation. These are the preparation steps I've done uh, because I know I'm going to need to do these things and it's just saving a bit of time and you don't have to see me typing in my password and stuff like that. So I've already logged into Launchpad. You can see uh, I may use Launchpad later on. So I've logged into Launchpad. You can see I'm logged in there. Uh, I've also logged into GitHub because it's possible I might want to do something in GitHub. So I'm logged in there. It may be that I do a pull request later on to this project to enable Snap support. Maybe, maybe not. We'll, we'll see. Depends how long we get. Um, we've already been going six minutes and I've not done anything. Um, so those are the first two steps. The next things I did was to install the tools that I'm going to use to make the snap. Now, Snapcraft is the tool that we've created. It's written in Python uh, and it's available as a snap in the Snap Store. Who'd have thought it? And uh, I've done a snap install Snapcraft, which is the tool we use to make the snap. And then I've done snap install Multipass. The reason I've installed Multipass, Multipass is a a tool that Snapcraft uses to launch a VM and then build the Snap inside the VM. And the reason why we want to do that is because here I am running uh, Ubuntu 12.04, uh, sorry, 20.04, 12.04. Uh, I'm running uh, 20.04, well, Focal Fossa that will become 20.04. If I build a Snap on 20.04 right now, today, it's possible that the application will be linked against libraries that are in 2004 and thus won't work necessarily on older releases of Ubuntu or other Linux distributions because it will be linked against things like libc and other libraries and those things won't exist because from those distributions and from those releases of Ubuntu that libc is in the future, right? So uh, I'll come back to this, but what we're going to do is use Multipass in order to create an Ubuntu 1804 VM that it will build inside. Now, this is all transparent, and you don't actually have to do an awful lot to make this happen, but you just need to install Multipass. I'll come back to that. Next, I did a Snapcraft login, and the reason I did Snapcraft login is so that I am logged into the Snap Store as me, so that I can then, if I choose to, publish the Snap. Uh, so Snapcraft login is is a, a step that allows you to uh, manage your Snaps that are in the store, okay, from the command line. There's a web UI for the store, but there's also a command line UI. So that's the prep I did. Actually, you can see it all in a terminal here. So there were not many snaps installed when, and this is a clean install. Uh, so I snap installed Snapcraft. Now Snapcraft is a classic snap. That means it's unconfined. And it needs to be unconfined because it needs to have access to uh, compilers and other external binaries. And it needs access across the system. And it needs to be able to launch VMs and all kinds of stuff. So it's, uh, it's a classic snap. It's unconfined. Multipass similarly is a classic snap. Uh, you can see this before you install them. If I do snap info snapcraft, you can see there it says classic next to it. Whereas if I do snap info Firefox, you can see it doesn't say classic next to it. So snapcraft is a classic snap and so is multipass. So I've installed those, they're done. Then I did snapcraft login. 
and I logged in with my Ubuntu One account, which is the same account that you use to log into Launchpad. So once you've got a Launchpad account, you can Snapcraft login, and then that allows you to manage the snaps that you've got in the store. Okay, and I then just did Snapcraft Who Am I to prove that I am logged in using Snapcraft. It just puts a little token on your machine so that you can then log into the store. Right, we've done the preparation. So let's make a snap. Uh, so we're going to make a snap of this thing called, uh, now I don't know how you pronounce that. Is it Lapa? Lapa? It's, uh, it's the French word for rabbit, isn't it? I think. Um, so what we'll do is we'll make a directory called Lapa. Um, and we will, inside there, we will make a directory called snap. And we will touch a file in there called snapcraft.yaml. The snapcraft.yaml is the thing that drives snapcraft. And what we'll do is we will open that snapcraft yaml. It is empty, obviously, because I just touched it and didn't actually, uh, you know, put anything in it. So it's an, it's an empty file. Uh, so we're going to make a snap and I'm going to do it relatively quickly if I can. Um, and I'm going to describe what I do as I do it. So it's a YAML file. So it's uh, we put in entries and then a colon and then you know whatever the thing should be set to. Uh, name Lapa because that's the name of the application. Uh, we need to put in a summary, which is a short description, uh, which is a human readable description. And then we could put a longer description. Uh, this could be multiple lines. And typically what I do here is um, go and take some text from the GitHub page. Because why not? There's no point typing stuff when somebody else has already done the typing. So there could be multiple lines in there. Like you could get some of the documentation. You know, use the arrow keys move like like that um, useful tip that could go in there as well there we go so we've got a description now next uh, I want to put some technical details about snap because that so far is just metadata it's nothing like particularly interesting let's put some technical information about the snap so the next thing I do is specify a base now, the base is uh, the version of the core snap that's going to be mounted when this snap is run. So back here, I did snap list. You see this snap here, core 18. If I put base core 18, then when someone installs this snap, it will pull in this snap as well. And the core 18 snap contains a very minimal install of Ubuntu 18.04, something based on Ubuntu 18.04. If I do snap info core 18, you'll see it's pretty small. It's 57 meg. There's not a lot to it. And it's what's called a base snap. Okay, so the base snap is what this will be built against. Remember I said earlier, I'm on 20.04, but I need to build it against 18.04 so that it's as runnable and installable on as wide a number of systems as possible. So whatever Linux distro you install this resulting snap on, you will end up with the snap and core 18. Now there's also another one called core, and unfortunately, it's an unfortunate name, but core, it basically means 1604. So it's two years older and has older libraries and, um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use Core 18. There will, of course, in the fullness of time, be a Core 20 as well. So I could build with a with a Ubuntu 20.04 VM. So I'm just going to put Core 18, and I do that for all my snaps now. Everything is basically Core 18. In the future, I might switch to Core 20, but right now, Core 18 is good. Okay, next thing, I'm going to put version. Now, this is just a piece of text. Um, you could put like 1.0 in there or something like that. I'm just going to put uh, latest. Now it's human readable. You can put whatever you want in there. Look, you can see here, this, that's what goes in this column here, 
when someone does snap list it's these pieces of text here it could be a meaningful number a date stamp it could be anything but i'm just going to put the word latest in there because i i don't the, the software doesn't have a version number like if you look in github they've not done any releases like if they've done a release then i might use the latest stable release but they haven't done one so so that's where i'm getting my my idea for what version to put in there maybe later in a when the developer does a stable release or 1.0 i'll change that to 1.0 or something we can be a lot more um that can be a little bit more complicated that subject so we'll come back to that in a later video now the next thing i want to do is define how to build this thing and that's done with parts and there can be multiple parts in a snap so a snap might consist of many pieces put together if you think of something like um the obs snap which i'm using to record this the obs snap contains a part which is obs itself and then there's another part which is ffmpeg the the video encoder and then there's another part which is the nvidia headers and then there's another part for codec and and so on and so on so a, a snap can be very complicated and have lots of moving parts but remember this is a super simple snap so it has only one part and the part is the game now where is it going to get that from where's the source for this game we specify the source from wherever you get it pop there we go you can either put it like that and snapcraft will know that that's github and it will know to use git clone or git pull or git fetch or whatever or you could miss that dot git off and say source type git to give it a hint that that is a git url but i don't need to do that because i can just put dot git on the end and snapcraft knows what to do so we've told it where the source is now uh snapcraft has the ability to build all kinds of different software and if we look carefully remember i said uh that i liked the sound of this game because it was a terminal game which you know i'm a bit of a fan but also that it's written in rust and sure enough we know it's written in rust because rust uses these cargo file these cargo files and cargo is the tool that's used as part of the build process i don't know a lot about rust but thankfully i don't need to uh and uh snapcraft has a bunch of these plugins if i go uh, snapcraft list plugins you can see rust is one of them over here and there are a whole bunch of other plugins that can be used to build other software like if it was written in python i might use the python plugin uh, if it was written in go i'd use the go plugin and so on and so on if it just used bog standard auto tools or make or new newer tools like mason then you just specify that and so the plugin tells Snapcraft how to build this thing. So I just put plugin Rust. Right, that's it. Snapcraft now knows how to build that thing. Now, this is a super simple snap, and I know that that's likely to build okay. So that's all we're going to put for the part. Sometimes you need more in there. Sometimes you need to put additional libraries or maybe additional compilers or other tools. But for this, that's all you need. If I were to run Snapcraft with that, it would it would result in making a snap. But the binary that it makes, the actual game, would not be exposed to the outside world, to the to the host OS. And the way you you do that is with an apps stanza. And so there's in a snap there can be multiple binaries so you can expose those binaries that are inside the snap to the outside world to the host os remember these are containerized or you could not you could have binaries that are inside the snap that are only referenced by the snap internally so for example the obs snap has ffmpeg inside it but it's only obs inside the snap that needs to refer to ffmpeg you don't need to call ffmpeg from outside the snap if that makes sense so there's one application in here called lapa all the french people in the comments below will now be telling me i'm pronouncing this wrong uh, and there is a command and the command is lapin that's the binary that gets created when rust builds this uh well when 
Snapcraft builds this application, which is written in Rust. Now, there's one final thing I need to do, and I need to specify the type of confinement uh, model that we're using. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that um, Snapcraft is a classic snap, and so you see when you do snap info, you see um, a classic next to it. Um, actually, if I just do snap list, oops, be easiest. So here you can see multi-pass is a classic snap, Snapcraft is a classic snap. But some of these others, like the Snap Store, is not a classic snap. So some are, some aren't. And you, as the developer, uh, can choose what confinement model you want to use. And essentially there's two, strict and classic. There is another one, but it's too much to talk about today. Ideally, all snaps are strictly confined. But that's not the case. Uh, some are strict, some are classic. Ideally, we'd like them all to be strict, but that that's uh, that's difficult because some applications need to do things that break out of confinement. Uh, but this one doesn't. It's a really super simple application. It doesn't need to uh, do anything complicated. It doesn't. It's not like a, an IDE or anything. It's a simple terminal game, so it should be okay to be strict. Now that's it. That's all I need in my YAML in order to get it to build. I think uh, so we've got the metadata we're telling it it's building against Ubuntu 18.04 core 18 piece of text for the version number there's one part it's a rust application and here's the URL to the git repo uh, down here we expose one binary from the snap and uh, we've told it it's a strictly confined application so I've saved that and so you can see we just have this this file called Snapcraft. And now all I do is just run Snapcraft. So this is going to take a little while to build. Uh, Rust applications tend to take a little while. Uh, so while that's while that's happening, um, I think I will go quiet. And then what I'll do is speed this bit up and we'll see the result at the end. And we're done. So the snap is now built. Uh, if we scroll back through here, uh, I can explain what it did uh, right back to the top. So I ran Snapcraft. It used Multipass to launch a VM. You can see here mentions of Bionic here inside the VM. It sets up all the stuff inside the VM in order to be able to build in the VM. But you'll notice it's mentioning Bionic because while I'm on 2004 on my host, in the VM it's running 1804. And it sets up all the environment that enables it to do software compilation inside, like the minimum needed in order to build software. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that gets installed inside this VM, which I can throw away later. So it's it's ephemeral. I don't need to keep this VM. Uh, it then pulls the software from GitHub. So it grabs that and then uses the standard Rust tools in order to get hold of all the bits and pieces needed for Rust to build this application. All I did was say plug in Rust, and it's built the thing. Then Cargo does all its stuff, which is a little bit time consuming, but is really awesome, and builds a single binary at the end. So it's building, 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 compiling, compiling, and then right at the end, we've got a snap out the end. So if I just do an LS, you'll see I've now got a snap. Uh, what size is it? There you go, 1.2 megabyte snap. Let's install it and test it. So I'll just do snap install dash dash dangerous. And the dash dash dangerous means I don't know the origin of this snap. It could have come from anywhere and it could contain anything. So you know, someone might have given me this snap on a USB key and I've got no idea what's in it. And the dash dash dangerous means I am accepting responsibility for installing this software on my computer. It hasn't been through the store review process. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. So I'll just uh, put in my password to install this snap. Snap is installed. So if I do snap info, sure enough, it's installed. The latest version, remember the version number that I had in my uh, text file, that's where that comes from. 
uh, and you can see the refresh dates to nine uh, today at 939 which is the time right now and the one megabyte is the size that we saw uh, somewhere around about there okay so and there you can see the description that I put in up here that all gets baked into the snap that's all very well Alan but what you're really thinking here is let's play the game true that is correct and so uh, if I just run lapa the game starts uh, now I've um, I've already had a quick play of this game so I know how it works uh, it's really cool I don't want to spend the entire video playing this game it is very dangerous that that will happen so I am the rabbit and it's turn-based these are the knights who have uh, rifles and they will kill these which are the uh, wolves and foxes who are trying to kill me as a poor innocent rabbit now these guys can't go on the sand for some reason I don't understand why but they can't um, and the white ones are sheep I think uh, so I need to stay away from these guys stay near these guys and away from them and get to the lovely green grass that's up in this tree remember this game was designed by uh, a six-year-old and a four-year-old child so um, I'm gonna kind of hover around the the pink guys you don't have to move fast because it's turn-based I move then they move uh, and I, yeah I'm putting myself in danger up here but I'm also staying near the the knights who have their rifles and they're they're protecting me oh I get anything to get away from those guys coming in the door um hey guys can you kind of help me here there you go there we go um looking good um I'm going to go out the back. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to come back this way. Come on. Come on, guys. Sort those those foxes or wolves or whatever they are. The baddies. Uh, oh, and that that there, um, I think that's uh, some kind of hunter. I think that's the one with the rifle. Is these the ones with the swords? It, I don't know. I haven't read the instructions properly. Anyway, success. So there's no more baddies. I can go all the way over here and then up here. And there we go. You're on the grass. Win. Q to quit, escape to go back to home. So you go escape, and it takes you back. And now I've won that level, and I can go on to the next level. I'm not going to do that. You can do that later on. Q to quit. So, I, you know, every time I want to play, I just run that, and it records my progress. You can see there it's recorded my progress, which was the comment in the description about having per player uh, remembered what levels you're on. So this is brilliant. Uh, it's done. Now, the next question is, what do I do now? Um... And really, the the next step would be to well, there's there's two there's two forks in the road I, there's, that I could take. One, I could offer my Snapcraft YAML to the upstream developer and say, "Here's a Snapcraft YAML," and explain what that YAML is, and say, "This will enable you to publish this thing in the store." Now, put yourself in the mind of a developer who receives a pull request like that on a project which is just a game they built with their kids. I may be making an assumption here, but I would imagine that they're probably thinking, well, that's nice. Uh, you know, maybe interesting that someone's taken an interest in my game, but this was just a little play thing that I made, maybe. Um, so what I would probably do is take a different fork and actually register the name myself in the store, publish it, and then offer the YAML to the developer and say, look, I, I published this thing in the store. Here's the YAML. Uh, this describes how it was built and if you wanted to own the application I'll have it transferred to you because that then gives them the option of saying no it's okay it was just a play thing it's just a toy I don't really care about it that much I don't really want to publish it in app stores okay and I think that's a reasonable thing to do especially for something which is open source right because I'm not taking something that cannot be distributed this is MIT licensed code um, and I think I think it's a, a a reasonable offer to put this in the store and then say to the developer, it's up to you what you do with it. You can either own it or I'll carry on publishing it. It's entirely possible that the developer will never make any changes to this application. You know, there's there's that to think about as well. In which case, it's published in the store and it will be frozen in time forever, and anyone can install it. However. It may be that people discover this through that uh, Hacker News article and then maybe do pull requests and offer up fixes or new levels. I mean, they do put a call out in the readme to say, you know, maybe offer new levels, in which case uh, maybe I'll update the snap. 
we'll talk more about updating the snap and um, automating that maybe maybe later but i just wanted to get to the point where i could publish this in the store so how would i go about doing that let's say i did want to publish it in the store and to be clear i one of the preparation steps i already did is i've made sure this wasn't already in the store um and it's not it's not already in the store and there is no snapcraft yaml in there already so i'm not duplicating work and nobody's done a pull request to offer a snapcraft yaml and there's no issues filed against this project where they've said hey you should make a snap in the air and the developer has said no go away like so you know those things all factored into me choosing this application as well uh so what's the next step i've got a snap it's built and I've done some extensive testing and it works. So the next step is you register the name in the store. And the way you do that is Snapcraft register. Huh. Now, I'm registering the real name of the application. If I was registering a trademarked brand, then we might go down a different path. You might want to contact the developer and make sure they're happy with you doing that. But because this is a little game and I don't think they've registered a trademark and I don't think there's a big brand police behind this, I'm just going to register the real name. Um, I would avoid doing this, registering the name hyphen snap. This is a trap some people fall into when they register names of things. You don't need to do hyphen snap because it is by definition a snap in the snap store. Having hyphen snap in the name just is tautologous it's pointless so we don't do that now when you try and register it says ah, are you sure you want that name uh, you know would it be fair for people to think you're the publisher of that application and for now i'm gonna say yes because i'm publishing it on behalf of the upstream developer and as i said i can offer the yaml to the upstream developer so i'm going to say yes done i am now the publisher of lapin now that means there will be a store page, snapcraft.io slash lapin. But it's not there yet because there's no snap in the store. So there's no there's no store page until you actually publish the snap. And publishing the snap is also super easy. We've got our snap in this directory. You go snapcraft, push, and then the file name that you want to push. And if I just do that on its own, it will push it into the store, but it won't release it and nobody will be able to see it. So I'm going to do that just to show what the process looks like. Now, this only works, this Snapcraft register and Snapcraft push only works because I had already done Snapcraft login. So I was logged into the store with my account. OK, <laughs> it's done. It's pushed it to the store. My little application is pushed to the store. But again, if I... Uh, hit refresh you won't see it because the snap has not been released uh, so it's possible to keep pushing and pushing and pushing to the store but never actually release it um, why is that taking so long right let me log into the store oh crikey I've got to do this um, bear with me just one moment while I type in my password controls and all that Sorry about this. Uh, nope. And then I have a two factor auth on this account. Right. So I'm now logged into the store. And it will list all the snaps that I have. Um, which is yeah, quite a few. And somewhere down here, there it is, a lapper. And you can see it says not released. Now, the first time you go to your application, it takes you through a little tour of the, of the store page. I'm going to skip that because I've seen this already and you can see this yourself. But it just takes you through each of the various parts of the, the store. So this is my uh, admin tool in the store. This is where I manage the application. And here you'll see that it's pulled in the name of my snap. Uh, I can change things in here. I could change this to games. Where's games? Uh, there it is. Couldn't see it. Game. Um, and uh, I could add a screenshot. Uh, let's do that. Let's add a screenshot. 
Uh, so if I open a new terminal, new window, and in that I do lapin, and then I'll do alt print screen, go, and then we'll choose one of the pretty looking levels. Oh, now I got shot. Uh, <laughs> I was killed by a hunter. Um, escape. Let's try that again. Actually, what's a better level to? Oh, that looks cool. A print screen. Okay, so uh, let's quit and close that. And then I can add a screenshot, which my screenshots are in here. Uh, let's put that one in first. Put another screenshot. I think you put up to four screenshots in here. Go save that. There we go, it changes. If I had an icon, an image for an icon for this application, I'd, I'd upload one there, but I don't have one yet. Um, now you'll notice down here the text that came from here. So it puts the text in in there, but you can edit it yourself. So you can add uh, in here. Uh, built. Code at there. I think that's useful to put in because then if someone stumbles on this snap in the store, they can get their way to the upstream source code. You could put the developer website in there, but this is an unofficial snap. It's not officially supported or sanctioned by the upstream developer. So I tend not to put the upstream developer's URL in there. Um, I might put my email address in there though. So if people want to contact me, they can. Uh, and the final thing down here, I'm going to put the license in. Now, remember, the license, it's MIT. So I just put in here, MIT, and it searches through the list. Uh, somewhere down here, MIT license. There we go. Save that. So that's just me doing, like, prettying up the, the store page. What's important, though, is this releases tab over here. If I go to the releases tab, it should show me the build that I just uploaded. Uh, my connection's a little bit slow today. I don't know why that is. Hello? Oh, there we go. No. There we go. So, in the releases tab, uh, there's a column here for AMD64. And the reason for that is the only build that's been uploaded is AMD64. And it's revision one. Revision one was the one that I built. So back here, I did Snapcraft push. I pushed it to the store and revision one of Lapa created. If I build it again and push again, it'll be revision two and then revision three, revision four. And so these numbers just go up sequentially. Each individual build, no matter what the architecture, is a new revision. And so what I can do with this revision is I can release it to the stable channel. There are multiple channels in the store, stable, candidate, beta, and edge. They're optional, but the main one you need is the, is the stable channel. And if I hit save, that's it, done. The snap is now publicly available for anyone to install. The fact that it's gone into the stable channel, if I look over on the settings tab, you can see by default, the snap is public. I could make it private or just not list it so it doesn't show up in search results. But the fact that I've made it, it, it by default it's public and I've put a release into the stable channel by just highlighting this release down here and saying put it in the stable channel. It's grayed out because it's already in the stable channel. Hit save. That's it. It's now public. And in fact back on the listing page it gives you a link to the snap listing page. And if I open that, there we go. The snap is now public. You could go to this URL and browse the awesome screenshots of this application, read the details, see the license, click the link to see the upstream project, contact me if you wanted to, share this with other people if you wanted to, and that's it. It's, it's done. So I've been talking now for, uh, according to the clock, 44 minutes. So I think that's under an hour I've gone from identifying an application, building it, publishing it in the store. Now, just to prove that it's published, there's a couple of things we can do. One, I could do snap install lapin. However, I've already got that application installed. Remember, if I do snap info lapin, I've got 
X1, revision X1, which means I installed it, I, in inverted commas, sideloaded the snap onto my laptop. I didn't get it from the store. Remember, I had to do the dash dash dangerous thing. So what I could do is snap remove lapin and then snap install it from the store. But there's a better way. I can do snap refresh that snap oops, from uh, the store. And there's an extra thing I have to put to say amend to say I'm no longer tracking the version that was installed on my local machine. Uh, I want to install from the store. Uh, I now want to track versions that are in the store. That dash dash amend is only needed if you're switching from a locally installed snap to the remote one. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, so now, if I do snap info lapin, you can see now I'm using revision one of the snap, and it's the stable release. Now, let me show you an advanced mode thing that now that I've got it published in the store and you could you could install this yourself. One of the things that I've done, I've only built it for AMD 64. But what if you're on a Raspberry Pi uh, and you want to play this game? Well, Raspberry Pi is ARM and not AMD 64. And one of the things we can do with Snapcraft is remote build. Remote build. And what remote build does is it takes your source code, pushes it into Launchpad, and builds it for whichever architectures you specify. And then when it's finished, it downloads the resulting snaps to your local machine, which you could then publish in the store. So here's an example. I could do Snapcraft remote build and then build on and then specify this big list of architectures. Let's try that and see what happens, okay? If I just run remote build, build on those and hit enter, It'll give me a warning to say, you're going to push code to Launchpad and it's going to be publicly available. People will be able to see that code. And that might be a, a concern if you're building a proprietary application. But for me, where I'm just pushing my YAML and the upstream source is MIT licensed anyway, so that's not a problem. So I'll just say yes. Ooh, the remote builder requires the use of Git utility and Git is not installed. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Let's do at install Git. Okay, let's try that again after I install Git. So what it does is it packages it all up and uses Git to push it into Launchpad. So let's try that again. Yes, I want to send it. Okay, now what it's going to do is set, uh, open uh, Launchpad. That link, I'm going to close that because it's open a new browser and I'm already logged in in another browser. So um, close that. What I'm going to do is take that link, copy it, and go in here where I'm already logged into Launchpad because it needs authentication to allow you to push code to Launchpad. So it says here this computer, Deep Thought, which is this laptop, Deep Thought, wants to access your Launchpad account in order to push code into the Launchpad. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Read all of this. I'm going to say, allow it until I disable it. There we go. Now, if we go back, it should, ooh, fail to execute. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, okay, so you have to actually read the error. So, because this is a brand new clean laptop, there's some git steps I need to do. I should have added this to my preparation. I'll add this to the documentation. Uh, Alan at popey.com. And then uh, Alan Pope. This probably wouldn't be a, a problem for most people who already have Git configured. Yes, I want to send it. Okay, now I've already authenticated to Launchpad, so it's now sending the code into Launchpad. And it's going to build for all of those architectures. So there you go. It's now started building this great rabbit game for all of those architectures. Now I'm going to anticipate that at least one of them will fail. Rust is great, but 
it often fails to build for me on um, ARM HF. Uh, sometimes uh, it may build, it may be fine, but often there are one one of these. If I scroll up, one of these things that builds as part of the application fails, and so you know that that can be a problem. So now it says currently building. Let's go and have a look and see where it's building. It's building in Launchpad, and Launchpad has a set of builders. If you go to launchpad.net slash builders, you can see them. And if I scroll through this, um, I might be able to see my thing. In fact, I could just search for it. So let's go Lapin. Oh, look, there it is. There's an i386 build of it building there. And there's a AMD64 build of it going there. And there's the ARM64 one there. There's the ARM HF build. There's the PowerPC build, and there's the S390 mainframe build. Anyone who's got a mainframe with a terminal will be able to play this awesome rabbit game. <laughs> but all this is going to do is build uh, the uh, game as a snap in each of these build machines, and Snapcraft will monitor that happening on all of those build machines and update this screen every... 10 seconds is it 10 seconds or 30 seconds something like that 30 seconds it will update this screen and let me know so what we'll do is we'll uh, accelerate this little bit here while we wait for it to build and then we'll come back when it's finished building or successfully or not each of those architecture builds of this game Okay, so it looks like it's just finishing off now. Uh, you'll notice, as expected, at least one of them failed to build. Um, I say as expected, I would hope that they all build all the time, but sometimes uh, there are build failures. Now, when it's finished, it will pull down all of the snaps that built successfully. It will also pull down the build logs so you can look through the build log and see um, how that worked. And it will also pull down the build log for any that failed to build. So you can see now it's pulling down each of the ones that worked and their build log, and then pulling down the build log for the one that failed. Now I'm not gonna look into the one that failed for now because we haven't got time for that. Um, but uh, I could, copy one of these across to a Raspberry Pi or an i386 machine or a mainframe if I had a S390 mainframe um, and test them over there. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't have any of those available and I'm going to assume that this works okay and show you the process uh, of what you do next. So we've got a bunch of snaps here. Um, and I need to just move things around a little bit because has it overwritten the one I had previously? Yes, it has. That's okay. So let's say I want to upload all of these to the store. I could do or s in star dot snap do snapcraft push uh, f uh, s and then I can add release edge. So what I'm going to do there is loop through all the snaps in this folder, of which there are five, one, two, three, four, five, for all the architectures, and for each one of them, do a snapcraft push to the store and release it to the edge channel. I could release it to, actually, let's release to candidate, not edge. There we go. It's pushing each one. Now, here's another thing that's worth noting. Because I've already uploaded the AMD64 one before, this time it just uploads a delta. It generates delta uploads. So if you're working on your laptop and you're repeatedly pushing the same snap to the store, it does delta uploads. You'll also notice that it says processing. And part of that processing is the store doing a review to make sure that you're uh, snap is not broken, so you can't publish a broken snap. 
you'll notice there we go revision one is still in the stable channel that was the first one i published and revision two of the amd64 one is in the candidate channel because i said release to candidate revision three the next upload was the arm 64 one and that also went into candidate but there's no stable build there because i didn't publish a stable build of arm 64 architecture yet revision four goes in the i386 architecture candidate channel and revision five goes in the PowerPC uh, candidate channel. Finally, revision six, which is the S390, goes into the candidate channel there. And so if we go back to the store and go to the releases tab, where previously there was only one column, which was AMD64, you can now see that we have revision one in that column, and then all the new builds are in the candidate channel. And I can from here just push them all into the stable channel done well, doing <laughs> shouldn't take long that's it there is now a build of this game for all of those architectures and in fact if you refresh the store page you'll find up here it shows a list of all the architectures that it's available for so if you're running a 64-bit ARM device that's got snap support, you could install this game there. If you've got a mainframe that's got snap support, you could install the snap on there. That's it. So uh, I think we're just over the hour, but I still think I came in under an hour because a lot of that was uh, time spent describing everything. I hope that was interesting, and uh, I hope you... Uh, may have questions and comments that feel free to leave uh, on this video. Uh, I think in a later video I'm going to look at a more complex example because this was like the world's simplest uh, Snapcraft YAML. Uh, and a bit later on what I'll likely do is do a pull request against the Upstream project and offer them this Snapcraft YAML and if they want to take ownership of the game they can. Uh, but that's it for, for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, please do share and uh, don't forget to hit the old subscribe and like and all that nonsense. Thanks everyone. Have a good day.